Chapter 12 Resuscitating Your Writing. In this chapter, making your words speak to funders, incorporating real-life examples to capture attention, spinning a spellbinding program design, winning peer review points by writing to the criteria. The old-school style of grant writing was cut and dried, actually, it was boring. Page after page of term paper paragraphs with few injections of case statements, stories about the target population in need, and not many eye-catching, easy-to-read sentences. However, when it comes to writing competitive grant applications today, most funders want brevity, real-life examples, and alignment between what they fund and your project in need of funding. Foundations and corporations are more receptive to this type of writing than government agencies. There are a lot of easy writing spin tips that can help you breeze through writing online e-grant applications, as well as paper funding submissions. So, do you need an advanced degree in creative writing? No. Do you need to hire a spin master? Well, it might help to reduce your stress, but what you really need is this book and, most importantly, this chapter. In it I share with you some vivid words and phrases that are sure to jumpstart your creative side. This chapter is where I share the best of the best from Bev with my faithful readers. I think you'll find yourself returning to these pages over and over, every time you write. Sit back and get ready to discover the real definition of wordsmithing or magnetizing writing. Putting a heartbeat in your writing. If you've read other chapters in this book, you know that I give you tons of action steps for every point in the grant seeking and grant writing processes. But for this chapter, I want you to throw out your get to the point ideas about writing. Reprogram your brain with passion, creativity, and emotion, the qualities that equate to the art of storytelling, which is the new way to present your organization's case, needs, to funders and win grant funding. Make every sentence one that contributes to the big picture, why you need the funding blot. Even with today's online grant makers, who require your application submissions be typed into tiny text boxes, you can still add life or put a heartbeat in your writing. You won't be wasting spaces or characters. You will be writing within the parameters for characters and spaces. However, your words can and will come to life by following the tips in this chapter. At first, being creative and pulling words from the outer limits of your mind seems difficult and awkward. But you did it as a child, and you can do it again. Give yourself some time to practice this storytelling approach, and in no time you'll be writing like the pros. To help you settle into the writing process, the next sections offer you three easy-to-follow steps. Step 1, describing specifics about who, what, and where. Some grant seekers spend pages writing about what they need but then include only one paragraph to take the readers on a virtual tour of the community where the grant funds will have an impact. A better strategy is to present a basic this is who we are paragraph to explain to the funders decision making staff the who, what, and where about your organization dot. Be brief, but make every paragraph of your grant application count. Remember that money comes, in part, from the heart of funding decision makers and, in part, from the logical thinking process. In Chapter 6, I give you the definition of private sector funders. In Chapters 4 and 5, I write about government agencies that award grants. Here's a compelling example that describes the who, what, and where of a non-profit organization. Use it to kickstart your journey of exploring creative writing and using words that work. Applicant Organization, founded in 2020 by Kevin and Pat Jones, Michael's Heart is a 501, C, 3, non-profit focused on helping parents that lose a child unexpectedly understand the importance of organ donations. Michael's Heart is a small 501, C, 3, non-profit organization based in St. Lake City, Utah. We named our organization after our deceased son, Michael, whose life was abruptly ended while he was riding his bicycle to deliver newspapers to customers on his route. A hit-and-run driver left Michael lying dead. Little did we know that our devastating sorrow would result in donating our son's heart to another child who would not have lived more than three more days without a heart transplant dart. Typing a very brief but magnetizing paragraph into an online e-grant application field requires creative writing. As William Shakespeare said, brevity is the soul of wit. This example is 114 words, 500 characters, or 692 characters with spaces. Remember, the space and character allowance may be small. If you're going to submit a Microsoft Word or Adobe PDF document, 
You can certainly add more information about your organization. Chapter 14 covers how to write lengthier replies to describe your organization to funders doubt ultimately. You want to write to meet the funder's guidelines while spinning a story about the organization, where it's located, and whom it serves. Step 2, Presenting the Need with Validation. Most applications have a specific section for the need statement, also called a case statement. Note that a case statement is not the same as a case study. Case statements and need statements are one in the same, I discuss this in depth in Chapter 15. If the sun is shining and everything is fine inside and outside your organization, you really don't need any grant monies, right? That's how the grant readers view what you write. If you write only about the good things happening, you don't have justification or need for outside funding. I know it may be difficult if you're a positive person by nature, but when writing an application, you need to do the following, focus on the gaps in existing programs and services within your organization. Research and write about the community's gaps or needs to amplify what's missing in the targeted area. Be prepared to tell and support with recent statistics just how dire the situation is for your target population. Head to Chapter 15 for a tour of how to write your statement of need with doom, gloom, drama, and trauma. Here is an example of a brief statement of need for another type of grant applicant, the most recent data available from the 2020 American Community Survey, AXE identifies the above urban communities within St. Louis as high poverty, meaning the area poverty exceeds 30%, it is made up of 48 contiguous census tracts within the St. Louis metropolitan area. The 2020 Axe 5 year estimate shows a poverty rate of 43.06% in the target community, which far exceeds the overall rates for the communities in our census tracts for St. Louis County, 33.97%, and the state of Missouri. 15.50%. In 2013, the U.S. Census poverty rates for all 115 counties in Missouri showed that St. Louis City, SLC, had the second highest rate in the state, behind only Pemiscot County, which has only 17,650 residents. SLC has a two-year recidivism rate of 37.9%, calculated on 30 June, 2020, the most recent rate available compared with the state rate of 35.5%, MO Sentencing Advisory Commission, August 2019. The Bureau of Prisons is estimating an endless flow of 3,000 offenders to be released in SLC annually. This high volume of releases in one concentrated area already permeated with high crime, unemployment, domestic violence abuse, and recidivism rates will take its toll on our service area. These numbers justify the need for a long-term recidivism reduction program. Without immediate intervention, helpless family members, neighbors, and the public at large will be in danger of uncountable acts of crime. Doubt this example is only 226 words and 1,411 characters with spaces. This can be trimmed to meet more stringent e-grant application requirements. When you write about your unfortunate situation, don't go overboard. To be safe. Select a dozen or so terms from the following lists to build a compelling justification for why your organization needs grant funding, alienate, abandon, abashment, abbreviated, abortive, adjudicate, aghast, aimless, backbone, backfire, barren, baseless, benign, besiege, betray, beyond, bland, blast, blatant, bottom, boundary, capitulate, categorical, ceaseless, censor, challenge, cheapen, Choke, clash, close-minded, collateral, commonplace, compound, concealed. Danger, deadly, decadence, decay, decline, defection, demoralize, depressive, despairing. Economical, eject, elongated, emaciated, emergency, endless, endure, entangle. The next group of words calls out to grant readers consciously and subconsciously. Use these words to grab and keep the attention of grant readers. Fade, fallacy, fallible, faltering, fault, fetless, fend, feverish, fictitious, final. Germain, glaring, gloom, glum, gradual, grasping, grave, gulf, gut. Habitually, hollow, half-hearted, hamper, haphazard, harbor, harden, hardly, harrowing, harshly. Icy, idleness, immoral, impassable, immutable, impenetrable, imperfect, impractical. Jagged, jolt, judicious, jurisdiction, 
justification, juxtaposed. Keen, kick, kill, knife-like, knockdown and drag out. Lacerated, lackadaisical, lambaste, lapse, lash, latitude, levity. Your words must come to life and create a story that is worthy of a competitive grant award. The following strong words can give you the winning edge every time, madness, maggot, makeshift, malign, mandate, matchless, migratory, nameless, near at hand, neglectful, never-ending, nonetheless, object, orphan times, ominous, once and again, one-sidedness, outcry, painful, pallid, paradigm, parallel, paralyze, paramount, pariah, partiality, precarious, propensity. Quagmire, queasy, quit, quizzical. Rabid, ration, rattle, ravage, recluse, reevaluate, relinquish, remedy, remiss. Writing with words that bring life and attention means you have to start and keep thinking outside of the box. Granted, this strategy isn't the way you usually load up your paragraphs with words, but you're ready to start winning all your grant requests, sacrifice, safety, sanction, scant, scatter, search, CD. Seemingly, separation, seriously, shallow, tacit, tantamount, tarnish, temperate, thwart, tight-fisted, time-worn, unaccompanied, unadvisable, unbiased, indescribable, unthinkable, vacancy, vacillating, vague, value, vanish, variance, vegetate, wave, wallop, waning, watchful, weakling, weary, yearning, yielding, yonder, zealous, Zenidart. Don't underestimate the power of the written word. Using powerful words to paint a picture of where the problem is geographically located is especially important when you're approaching potential funders who aren't located in or near your community. However, when you use new words in a grant application, make sure you know the meanings and connotations of them so you don't end up using them incorrectly. Don't be shy about using an online thesaurus to bring your thoughts to life in a way that conveys true and serious need. You can also find synonyms and antonyms online. Most word processing programs come with a thesaurus as well. A thesaurus is a wonderful tool to help you expand your vocabulary and ultimately become a better writer, but if you're new to vocabulary expansion, be careful to avoid words that most people aren't familiar with. In an attempt to sound smart, your writing style may be viewed as confusing and convoluted by potential funders. Step 3. Incorporating a case study. Think about the people who your organization has served. Who are they? Why did they need intervention services? What was their life story? You can incorporate real-life stories of gloom, doom, drama, and trauma into your statement of need. Just remember to change the name and don't embellish their situation. A case study reminds funders that their dollars will impact someone's life. Here is an example of a case study. One of our clients, Jeffrey, lost his father when he was 16 years old. His widowed mother had a total of five children under the age of 18 and a full-time professional level job. She worked five days a week, often working on Saturdays for overtime compensation. Jeffrey was left alone a lot. He started roaming the streets looking for anything but the four walls he lived his life in, day in and out. Unfortunately, Jeffrey was recruited by a neighborhood gang the summer after his father died. The gang promised him expensive athletic shoes, gold chains, and money in his pocket to help his mom support a household total of six. Jeffrey's initiation into the gang was to steal a car. That's all he had to do, break into the car and drive it to a nearby warehouse where the gang would break the car down for parts. It sounded so easy. Jeffrey knew he was fast, smart, and could make money by joining the gang. Well, Jeffrey's story did not end well. He was caught and sent to adult court where he was sentenced to 10 years in prison. Our recidivism reduction team started working with Jeffrey six months before he was scheduled for release from prison. That was five years ago. Today, Jeffrey has a two-year apprenticeship degree from community college, he earns $40 an hour, and he works 40 to 50 hours a week. Jeffrey owns his own condo and drives a reliably used car. As a part of our program, he was also required to start a savings account. In his spare time, Jeffrey volunteers as a peer support facilitator to our juvenile offenders. Case studies go from bad to good to great. They show potential funders that you have a successful program model. Personalizing your grant application's need statement with a case study can help you score the maximum peer review points on your statement of need.
racking up peer review points in the program design. In some foundation and government grant writing formats, the program design requests are purpose of this request statement. This is one sentence that precedes your goals, objectives, implementation strategies, and the rest of the program design narrative. You can read specifics about the program design in Chapter 16. One sentence may not seem to be enough, but remember that this sentence is the bridge between the statement of need and the full program design texts. Starting with the purpose of this request statement. In most grant writing application formats, the program design must be written after one or two first priority narrative sections. These sections are the organizational capability component and the statement of need. By now, the grant readers need a mental regrouping to remind them of the purpose of your grant requests. This applies to foundation and government grant applications. One sentence purpose statements look like this, government requesting language, the purpose of this grant application is to request federal funding support for the St. Louis Recidivism Reduction Project, located in St. Louis County, Missouri. Foundation requesting language, the purpose of this proposal is to invite the ABC Foundation to become a change-making stakeholder of the St. Louis Recidivism Reduction Project in St. Louis County, Missouri. In these examples, can you see how just changing a few of the words softens the request to foundations? The government purpose statement is straightforward. The foundation purpose statement is worded as an invitation for a funder to come on board as a change-making stakeholder of the St. Louis Recidivism Reduction Project. Aligning your goals and SMART objectives with the purpose of the funding. Remember, you want to win grants from day one as a grant writer. To do so, you need to write your objectives using the SMART structure, which means that your objectives are specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. To do this, begin by carefully reviewing the funder's mission and funding priorities. Look at funding program-specific information on their websites. Bookmark these pages because you'll be looking at them multiple times when you create your grant application's goals and objectives. Everything you write in your grant application must align with the purpose of the funding, government and foundation. Here is a purpose statement from a U.S. Department of Justice Notice of Funding Availability, NOFA, Second Chance Act Technology-Based Career Training Program for Incarcerated Adults and Juveniles. Overview, found at the beginning of the NOFA. The Second Chance Act of 2008 provides a comprehensive response to the increasing number of incarcerated adults and juveniles who were released from prison, jail, and juvenile residential facilities and returning to communities. There are currently over 2.2 million individuals serving time in our federal and state prisons, and millions of people cycling through local jails every year. 95% of all people incarcerated today will eventually be released and will return to communities. Programs funded under the Second Chance Act help ensure that the transition individuals make from prison and jail to the community is successful and promotes public safety. Securing employment can facilitate successful re-entry for people leaving correctional facilities. However, there are many barriers people with criminal records encounter as they attempt to re-enter both the community and the workforce. Improving employment outcomes for this population can contribute to recidivism reduction and increased public safety. The Second Chance Act authorizes federal awards to states, units of local government, territories, and federally recognized Native American tribes to provide technology-based career training to persons confined in state prisons, local jails, tribal jails, and juvenile residential facilities. This program supports training for technology-related jobs and the continuum of re-entry transition planning, including education, training, support services, and building connections to local employers that will enable participants to secure employment pre-release. Goals, objectives, and deliverables, use the table of contents in the NOFA to peruse this language. The goal of this program is to increase the post-release employability of the incarcerated population in technology-based jobs. The objective of the program is to establish and provide career training programs for incarcerated adults and juveniles during the 6 to 36 month period before release from a prison, jail, or juvenile facility with connections to follow up services after release in the community. Training components should be relevant to specific technology related needs of in demand jobs within the geographic area to which the individuals will be returning. Each participant should receive an individualized re-entry plan that addresses post-release transition services, including employment support services. 
When you're writing your goal for this grant application, extract Uncle Sam's language and keep the goal statement to one sentence. Remember, label your sentence goal. Goal, provide PERS release technology-based job training in five southern Mississippi confinement facilities for formerly incarcerated adults and juveniles released and returning to the targeted communities. Next, look in the NOFA for clues about objectives or measurements. This is what I found in the NOFA that I'm using for this example, for the objective. The objective of the program is to establish and provide career training programs for incarcerated adults and juveniles during the 6 to 36 month period before release from a prison, jail, or juvenile facility with connections to follow up services after release in the community. For the measurements, I searched for measurements to locate this language in the NOFA, yes, you have to view the NOFA with an eagle eye, and found a link to a document with the performance measures for this grant program. The performance measures for this Second Chance Act program were established to indicate to what extent grant activities meet the following objectives, partner and work with a technology career partner to provide evidence-based re-entry services to offenders. Develop a technology career-specific curriculum for offenders. Train instructors to teach curriculum in technology career fields. Reduce recidivism doubt. Write your objectives using the SMART structure, which, as a reminder, means that your objectives are specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. Winning-minded grant writers look at the initial objective and the performance measures and create the following objectives in their grant applications, SMART Objective 1, by the end of year 1, increase career partners engaged in the project by 50% or more as demonstrated by the number of partners involved in Southern Mississippi workforce development programs targeting ex-offenders currently, baseline, and the number of new partnerships created during the planning year. SMART Objective 2, by the end of year 1, increase the content and competences of the region's current state-designed technology curriculum by 80% as demonstrated by the number of national technology training standards added to the community college and trade school curricula in southern Mississippi. SMART Objective 3, by the end of year 1, increase the number of instructors trained to teach the new rigorous curriculum in technology career fields by 90% as demonstrated by comparisons of the number of teachers currently certified to teach the outdated technology curriculum in the region and the number completing the 12-week, 20 hours per week training program and recertified by the Mississippi Department of Education. SMART Objective 4, by the end of year 3, Decrease recidivism among the targeted population enrolled in the Second Change Act Technology Careers Program in Southern Mississippi by 20% as demonstrated by tracking incarceration re-entry rates for the experimental group compared to the control group in the same region. Closing the deal by showing the long-term impact of the funder's investment. Use words and phrases such as external, internal, local fundraising, creating future funding partners, Inviting more external funding sources to the organization's table of partners, seeking to identify more investors in our stakeholders, and continuing grant-funded activities after the funding is gone. These words and phrases don't just point to something, they rock it off the page and say, we're planning for the future and asking for your help, and we have a plan for keeping this program alive after we spend your money, dot. All types of funders want assurances that when you finish spending their money, the show or program will go on. No funder wants the effort supported by its investment to suddenly shut down at the end of the funding period. In your program design and evaluation section, you must write a paragraph to address the funder's concerns about continuity, which arise during the funding request review stage. In fact, most grant applications include a question or a section on the sustainability of the project, where you must outline your plan for maintaining the project after grant funding ends. If this information isn't explicitly requested, be sure to include it anyway. This paragraph from the St. Louis Recidivism Reduction Project lays out the organization's financial plan for its project's future. The Second Chance Support Center, SCSC, has been successful in securing grants and contracts to support recidivism reduction programs. In 2020, the SCSC was awarded $13 million from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Renewal for the Second Chance Transitional Housing Facility and Supportive Services to Residents and their Families. This grant will cover five years of construction and operating support. This grant application seeks funding for three years of entrepreneurial training which will immensely benefit the clients served by the SCSC. On completion of this anticipated grant award, 
Our organization will have formed a grants advisory committee and identified ongoing funding support for all aspects of programming funded with the Second Chance Act grant, including the proposed entrepreneurial program. In addition, several local philanthropists have requested one-on-one -on -one presentations from city council members. One of our sustainability goals includes starting an endowment fund to perpetuate the SCSC for this community.